You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present The Apple of His Eye by Trisha Gracher with... Lucy Ailey Parker, Paul Francis, and Karen Singer. I am now unwrapping two new tapes for the purpose of this recorded interview. Do you understand? When asked questions, do not just nod. Say yes or no. Yes. <coughs> yes. We can hear you now, Mrs. Steele. Sorry, I'm a bit deaf. I end up shouting sometimes. You want to get one of these invisible hearing aids. Look, you can't see anything, can you? Now, there's going to be a loud noise, and that's to show that we're at the start of the tip. Still makes you jump, even when you're expecting it. This interview is being tape recorded. This is an interview with... State your full name, please. Are we on? Please state your full name. Yvonne Marie Steele. State your address, please. Where I'm living now, or before, in Dimchurch. State your current address, please. 12 Mattock Lane, London W5, 5BQ. State your date of birth, please. Oh. 27th of July, 1946. My dad just got back from the war in 1945. We were all in a bit of a rush back then. He'd been in Berlin. Terrible things he saw. I am Detective Inspector James. Also present is... Detective Sergeant Gray. There are no other persons present. The date is the 4th of December, 2016. The time is 3.17pm. We are in an interview room at Ealing Police Station, 67-69 Uxbridge Road, London, W55 SJ. At the conclusion of this interview, I will give you a form which will explain the procedure for dealing with this recording and how you can have access to it. You do not have to say anything. It may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I must advise you that you are entitled to free legal advice at any time. Do you understand? Yes. I must also advise you that you may speak to a legal representative on the telephone. Do you wish to do so? No. Where were you on the night of Thursday, the 24th of November, 1983? You were being physically assaulted by your husband. That's correct, isn't it, Mrs. Steele? Your neighbours heard an altercation and alerted the authorities. Why do you think they did that, Mrs Steele? Just got a bit overheated. You or Mr Steele? Can I call him Ken? <laughs> I don't normally cry. Not one for snivelling. I haven't seen him for years. Can you be more specific? July 27th, 2012. Night of the Olympic Games opening ceremony. All those lovely boys and girls, so proud. I was on duty. Extra security. Made sure no one planted a bomb. You were at home in your caravan in Dimchurch watching television. For the purposes of the tape, can you? Yes, yes. It's all in your notes, right? And your husband? Where was he? Down the Legion. How do you know your husband went straight to the Royal British Legion Club? They asked me all this the first time. We've found a body, Mrs. Steele. Oh. We didn't want to alarm you. We we're just trying to get a clearer version of what happened that night. I told you. You saw David Beckham and that was that. Body? Badly decomposed. Fitting your husband's description. Sounds about right. You're taking it very well, Mrs. Steele. Shall I get you a tissue? We were no Tom and Barbara. 
There's no record of a Tom and Barbara. From the good life. We weren't even Margot and Jerry. He was washed up this morning on the beach at Dimchurch. Fabric from his suit matched descriptions given by yourself and the bar staff at the Royal British Legion. Lots of people wear brown. With a fob watch still attached. Bearing the inscription, To my darling, always. That was his granddad's. From the war. The first one, the rotten one. What happened to his wife? Spanish flu. Just after she had the baby. And that was your husband's... Mother, yeah. The old man's sister moved in to take care of them both. One of those spinsters who was never going to get a chance of romance. Hard as nails she was. Like Miss Marple, only not so twinkly. Your husband was definitely wearing that watch when he... Never left house without it. Do you know of anyone with a grudge against your husband? Apart from me. Oh, marriages have difficulties. Uh, we're How just many ne- boyfriends have you had, Detective Inspector? How old are you? Thirty? Over thirty? Thirty-five. Looking good on it. Life must be treating you right. Sixteen I was when I met Ken. He was knocking about with Davy Thunder. Davy Thunder. Never heard of him. Come on, Detective Sergeant. My mate Brenda was going out with Danny, Davy Thunder. You had a difficult marriage. That's no secret, is it, Mrs Steele? Ever felt sorry for a bloke? Not just a little pang of pity, but where your heart melts into a puddle on the floor. I told Brenda Ken looked like a frightened hedgehog. He heard me. He wasn't supposed to hear me. Music wasn't supposed to stop like that. Brenda burst out laughing. I spent the rest of the evening trying to make it up to him. Nothing mucky. Like 1962. We sat up in the balcony watching Davy and Brenda jive the night away. Did Mr Steele have many friends at the Royal British Legion? Friends? On the committee? In the bar that night? I wasn't there. You know I wasn't there. In general. Did Mr Steele have many friends? Would they call him in the Mafia? Associates. Blokes he did business with. He'd been a local councillor, you see. Well, you know that. But you don't know he wouldn't let me smoke and hated it if I drank Campari. But no enemies. You're making it sound like Cluedo. Or I, Claudius. A man has died, Mrs Steele. Sixteen when we met. Sixty-six when he left me. Had he tried to leave you before? <laughs> He wouldn't know where to start. No bed in the committee room, you see. Were there other women? Ken? He was half blind, dear. There's no record of that. Even if he didn't have the cataracts. Who was his optician? Can they confirm this diagnosis? Detective Sergeant Gray leaving the room to retrieve the medical file. Interview suspended. 3.23pm. I loved him, you know. It wasn't just pity. Please wait for my colleague to return with the file. Can I have a cigarette, please? I don't smoke, but I can In the get... Sweeney, they give you a fag to soften you up. Crave an A for your throat's sake. Can you believe they put that on the posters? Don't worry, love. You have to be right about something. You don't want a cigarette now. You've got a daughter your age. Running around. Three kids, twin boys and a new baby girl. He helps, the husband, Michael. Do you want to see a picture? Interview recommenced at 3.25pm. Detective Sergeant Gray re-enters with the medical records pertaining to Mr Kenneth Steele. Detective Inspector James also present. Well, I had it in a separate filing cabinet. Nothing about cataracts in here. The optician had told him off. No more than five foot she was. Lovely little Asian girl. She said she wanted to see him again in six months, but he wouldn't go back. I said it was free now he's a pensioner. As soon as she pointed it out, I could see it in his eyes, all milky. You don't notice when you live with someone every day. What is the name of this optician? Boots, 
on Ealing Broadway. Would you say Mr. Steele was overly reliant on you? Overly reliant? Yes. I suppose he was. I'm nodding for the tape. I couldn't see what he was eating. Have you got children? For the purpose of the tape, Detective Inspector James is shaking her head. I think. My daughter never was the maternal type. Then she went and met Michael. And it's bang, 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 three kids in five years. Did you and Ken want more children? Joanne's adopted. We tried, but nothing ever happened. You know how it is, love. All that pain every month and every month the upset. Was he upset? Not so as you'd notice. Men don't always know how to show it. My dad... Did your husband blame you? Did he hold it against you? Bear a grudge? They never asked all this last time. They never had a body. Maybe he scratched something else on the back of that watch. To my sworn enemy until hell freezes over. So your husband was your sworn enemy? I'd say neither one of us knew any better. Sixteen when I met him. Never been kissed. Mind you, that was normal back then. After the Hammersmith Palais, Davy Thunder dropped us off so he could ravish Brenda in the back seat. I could see the windows steaming up, like in the films. Ken walked me up the path and stood there stock still outside the front door. I could see his dandruff in the moonlight. And then he said, do you want to do this again? He must have nodded. So he stuck his tongue down my throat. He sexually assaulted you? No. That was his version of romance. That was romance for half the Hammersmith Palais. I was a right amateur with the ladies. Still am. What happened next? What do you mean? After he had stuck his tongue down your throat. Nothing. It was like a little fish. What do you think happened? He didn't touch you inappropriately. Do anything else you were uncomfortable with. We held hands. Can you imagine it? Like we were waiting at a bus stop. Only it was midnight outside my front door and Davy Thunder was revving the engine. How would you describe your marriage? How would anyone? Answers on a postcard in under 25 words. Please try, Mrs Steele. How would you describe your marriage? One or two words will do. Thrilling. Yvonne, please. We want to help you. A roller coaster. Except you're stuck in the station, your legs trapped under the safety bars going nowhere. But somehow you still feel sick. Trapped? Yvonne Marie Steele, me Johnson, officially trapped, 1962 to 2012. So you were liberated when your husband left? 